For Wall Street Media, this is Nikki. I'm here with Doug, and we'll help you make money in the stock market with information you can't find anywhere else. And we're matching as usual. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, did you guys, I want the audience to know, did you ever notice that it's either Nikki or Tyler? You've never seen both of them on camera at <laughs> once? Yeah. We're only one person, really. <laughs> no. Um, Which we one got are stuff we? from Kepa. Super fantastic stuff, right? We sure do. Joe Grillo, president and CEO of Digital Angel, DIGA, discussed developments in the animal ID segment, electronic IDs, and country of origin labeling. We've recently announced our largest order ever. It's the UK Ministry of Defense, about a $9 million order. But we have a number of other uh, important orders that we, we, we had had this year. Again, uh, we do business in 40 different countries. Uh, great growth if you look at the half one, the first half operating results, 2007 to 2008. This figure here needs to be adjusted by about three and a half or four million dollars because of the timing of the acquisition in 2007. This doesn't reflect the full year, but even if you add in that three or three and a half or four million dollars, uh, again, great growth. Good margins, a little reduction in margin because the commercial business has slightly lesser margins than the defense business. What we acquired was a commercial business and a significant improvement in the bottom line, and we see more of this in the future. I'll shift over to our animal ID segment, the other half of our business. Uh, we're headquartered in South St. Paul, been there since the, the feedlots were there, in the, again, going back to the middle of the last century. Our animal ID products range from visual ID tags, which you see on the bottom left. They're not really a high-tech product. Uh, but then we have a, a very advanced uh, number of microchip-based products using RFID technology and readers, uh, and, there's a, and there's a trend toward those products, which give us greater sales through higher ASPs and greater margins. Uh, the markets are livestock, could be cows, pigs, uh, increasingly uh, requirements to tag goats and sheep and other uh, animals in the food chain, particularly in, in the EU. Uh, companion pets for the uh, reuniting them with their owners and wildlife. We put a lot of uh, millions of chips a year into salmon and other types of fish that are tracked through the dams in the Pacific, particularly the Pacific Northwest to track them. Um, it, it's a tough environment for some parts of our animal business today. Uh, if you're in the farming business growing crops, things are great because food uh, crop prices are way up. If you have animals, uh, you have to buy those food food products to uh, to uh, feed your animals. So the the livestock business is a bit flat. Our our single uh, uh, set reseller of our home again pet RFID products is uh, has a good growing business, but through some anomalies in how they acquired product last year versus this year, our business is down with them. Our wildlife business is very strong. So with the uh, Destron fearing the brand for the animal ID results are impacted by some of these uh, this year. The long-term uh, you know, position for these is still a tremendous growth market. Um, there's a lot of influences toward moving toward a visual ID to an electronic means of tagging uh, food products. Uh, an example of that is the country of origin labeling or the cool uh, law that, that comes into place here later this month in the U.S. This will require all meat products to be identified with where they were grown, where they were processed, slaughtered, uh, and, and, and where they were distributed from. Uh, nothing says you have to use electronics to, to create this and, and meet this requirement. However, there's an influence toward automating the identification of food products through the food chain that pushes toward electronic identification versus visual identification. We've seen that happening in other parts of the world at a faster rate. Things like this will help the U.S. market. I just talked to somebody from Digital Ally. I, I think it was Thursday, um, yeah. but recently, right? Class, smart. I don't think they're getting credit uh, for all their innovations or their recent earnings and stuff. They just picked up a $7.2 million dividend from Verisign, right? Or uh, from Verichip, I'm sorry. Um, 
right? They're yeah, sixty-two they're million dollar market cap company. That's more than ten percent of your market cap, right? I don't think they're getting the appropriate credit. A yeah. lot of people aren't in this market. Uh, German Mike and I this morning were talking about Dell, which I happen to own at the moment, and I was very happy this morning to see Michael Dell uh, pluck down a hundred million dollars worth of, uh, to buy more <laughs> shares back last week. Yeah. And at this moment, boys and girls, contrary to a rational market, Dell's down three and a half percent for the day. Yeah. So a hundred million dollars of shares bought by the owner um, released this morning did nothing. Irrational market, um, guys. Be careful on this one because when the rules aren't in, it's like you know we're playing blackjack. It's a casino. And, and I tell you, yeah, but it's not even a casino. It's, it's a casino worse. with changing games. It's like, and you say, oh goody doggy, look, I got one <laughs> and I say, oh, we just changed the rules. Eight, Eighteen. Mm -hmm. Eighteen is a bust from now on. You're, you're twenty-one. Yeah, you lose. Yeah. Um, it's irrational, That's what the doing. kids, and you need to be careful out in this market. Listen to these webcasts. We'll bring you the highlights. Um, speaking of which, you have some. I do. David Green, SVP of Finance and Strategic Planning of Dreams, Inc., DRJ, discussed web syndication, the field of dreams, and fans as chain storage and kiosks located around North America. Uh, you know what? I, I saw um, these guys, their store um, is on Fifth Avenue up here. A few blocks. Yeah, I never saw them before in Dreams, and I was like, Where oh, man, they? I could really use some Dreams. I mean, what are they bring in Dreams? And I was like, baseball hats. I have to go check them out. <laughs> I need to change my Dreams. I need a Yankees hat, though. I need German, my, Nicky. You don't, you don't dream of the Yankees? I need a Yankees hat. Okay. I need a Yankees hat and a Giants hat. Um, you got a Giants hat. Yeah, I did. That's right. When they won, right? <laughs> yeah, fantastic. I still need a Yankees hat, although they may never win again. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, miracles okay. can happen. My life is empty without a Yankees hat. Nick. Did you know the clubhouse is right across Fifth Avenue? Here? Now I have to get him a Yankees hat. Do you know the clubhouse <laughs> is right across the corner here? Yep. Okay. I do know. I'm just letting you know. Mike L. Hillo, CFO of Evergreen Solar, ESLR, announces proprietary technology which allows for the use of half the amount of silicon. Today, 5 grams per, wa per watt versus industry, 10 grams per watt. Gary Efren, CFO of Akina Solar, AKNS, announced proprietary technology for wiring and grounding and delay, which will cut installation time in half and features pleasant skylight and, and aesthetics, 70% fewer parts, and built-in wiring. Nifty, right? Jeff Cup, CFO of Microtune, T-U-N-E, discussed delivery of data through RF signals, how their technology fits into the market, cable industry trends, and the tuners that have been produced to meet and exceed performance standards. Yeah, that's a nice round up there. Interesting stuff, man. They always do a great job Lots at Cable. Cool, stuff. cool. Thanks, Nikki. We're here every day at Wall Street Media. You can find us directly at WSMCO.com. Thanks.